What's good, YouTube? If you're watching this video, you successfully made it to layer seven of the OSI model, where we give you nothing but that application you can apply directly to your life. I'm your host, Dwan. Look, today we're talking real skills. We're talking six figures. We're talking next level. We're talking you being successful in IT. Have you ever asked yourself, what skills do I really need? I know we talk a lot about certifications and IT certifications are excellent, but what IT skills are really going to give you that impact you need to be at the top of your field? Well, today we're going to talk five skills that will put you at the top of information technology in your area, no matter where you are in the US. Right now, there's three areas of information technology that I want you to pay attention to. The first one's gonna be security, the second one's gonna be the cloud, and the third is gonna be DevOps. Those three, in my opinion, will be the ones that move the winds of change in information technology in 2020. And so the top five information technology areas that I'm gonna share with you today focuses on those three areas. The first one, which is insecurity, is Cisco ICE. In 2019, companies are looking for full visibility in their network. More and more organizations are shifting from a wired connection to a more mobile connectivity into the infrastructure. And the best technology out there right now is Cisco ICE. This gives organizations full visibility, not only to look at their end devices with 802.1x and MAP, but it also allows them to manage this with Cisco DNA and in integrate their whole Cisco environment with Cisco ICE. Check Indeed, check LinkedIn, and look at network engineering positions. Ask recruiters about Cisco ICE. It's one of those technologies, if you can implement a distributed deployment and you understand certificate authorities and you understand 802.1x and you can manage an ICE infrastructure, it's gonna make you stand out in today's market. You can download Cisco ICE at home, it's available. You can lab it up, start learning, get the skills that you need. It's more CCMP security focused, but either way, there's resources out there. Um, Catherine McNamara, if you check out her networknode.com, if you check out her website, it's a lot of great information. And also shout out to my boy, Network Wiz Kid. He has a lot of information as well on Cisco ICE. There's resources out there. I'm not saying you go out there, read a couple books, lab it up a couple times. I'm saying a, a complete deep dive into Cisco ICE will help you stand out amongst other engineers right now because that skill set is in high demand. Number two, Cisco ACI. Understand clusters and APEX and understanding how to migrate infrastructures from fabric pad to application centric environments hands down, is a great skill set to have. You combine that with Ansible and network automation, you will be at the top of network engineers in today's market. Again, this isn't something you read a couple books and lab up. Hop on Cisco DevNet. There's a ton of resources to help you learn ACI. If you can learn ACI and be able to understand Nexus OS and migrating to application-centric deployments, even network-centric in ACI. Understanding that, it's going to help you stand out in 2019 and beyond because if you think about this, and here's a tidbit, there's going to be so many organizations that are migrating from the traditional fabric pad, the traditional network-centric to a more application-centric environment that there's going to be a huge market for not only employees looking for jobs, but business owners that specialize in migrating data centers. So for those of you that have more of an entrepreneurial mindset, that's something to think about if you really want to stand out and take a huge market share for data center deployments and data center migrations. Again, check out Cisco DevNet. There's a ton of resources on ACI on there as well, but you got to put in the work. You got to put it in the work. One more thing before we move on to number three. The ACI portion also integrates with the cloud. There's ACI anywhere. So understand that some AWS will be a huge gain along with some automation. Oh my goodness. The opportunities will be endless for you. Put in about six months to a year 
and learning that ACI, man, look, you will have your career in the palm of your hands. Number three, again, this is the cloud. More and more organizations are using hybrid infrastructures. So yes, they have their own premise, but they're also offloading to the cloud as well. With that being said, how can you do this and be secure and also have full visibility on your WAN? SD-WAN. Number three is SD-WAN. When I talk about ACI, there's many companies that are kind of migrating to ACI or taking a look at ACI, but SD-WAN is hot right now. People want to know, okay, how can I monitor all my WAN connections and have full visibility and full control? How can I migrate to the cloud and be able to have full visibility into the cloud? SD-WAN solves many of those problems and the skill set is so rare. If you really want to stand out, like I said before, Cisco ICE, ACI, and now SD-WAN with Cisco Vitella, you will be ahead of your class. Hands down, not much competition. If you can focus on, and I'm not talking about reading books and just labbing up a couple days. I'm talking about putting in months and months on work, taking side jobs, taking whatever so you can get hands-on experience, maybe even taking a pay, pay cut just so you can be a part of a couple migrations to get your experience. It's going to pay off exponentially if you do that now in 2019, 2020, you will be ahead of most network engineers in the game. Number four, we talk, we're talking about the cloud. We're talking about security. We're talking about DevOps. One technology that covers all of those, all three, is going to be Linux. Linux is IoT, Linux is in the data center, Linux is in the WAN, Linux is in the cloud, Linux is everywhere that you want to be. If you're at home watching Netflix, Linux is there. If you're in your car, I'm sure Linux is in the dash. You name it, Linux is there. So when we start talking Linux, if you want to be a system engineer or some type of server architect, understanding Linux at a deep level with managing backups, managing server application, managing web nodes, managing your whole data center pretty much when it comes to being able to script in Linux. Because when we talk the cloud, many microservices and containers are written in Linux, Docker, Linux. So when we talk about Ansible and everything else, most of those automation tools that we mentioned are ran on Linux. So we mentioned number one, Cisco ICE, number two, ACI, number three, SD-WAN, and number four, if you really want to stand out, it's going to be Linux. And number five, number five brings everything that I mentioned together, DevOps. Learning DevOps to be a DevOps engineer or a site reliability engineer. Listen to what I'm saying, a site reliability engineer. For those of you that are looking to learn Python and understand automation, there's a reason for all of this and it's DevOps. The CI, CD that everybody talks about in DevOps and understanding continuous delivery, continuous deployment, continuous feedback, continuous learning. Organizations want to release their products, their applications at scale, as fast as possible. They want to revise their applications as fast as possible. They want to push out code as fast as possible, continuously. When I started, Microsoft used to release patches, what, every, what, Monday or something? Or Patch Tuesday, or something like that. Those days, even at Microsoft, are long gone. DevOps has encompassed Microsoft, Netflix, Amazon, you name it, whatever organization is on top right now, they're using a DevOps model because it brings along Agile, it brings in ITIL, it brings in Lean. All of these frameworks come together to create a DevOps model that allows a organization to really take control of the market for their specific product. And for you that are really looking to take control of your career, a book that I suggest you read if you really want to understand the DevOps model at a more foundational, basic level, The Phoenix Project. I'll leave a link in the description for this book. This book tells a great story about DevOps and how it's implemented 
in a failing organization. And so for you, as a DevOps engineer, you're working with the business, you're working with operations, you're working with the developers, you're working with all these pieces to help the organization win. And for you that are looking to be a site reliability engineer, look, you understand in Linux, the needs of the organization, network automation, DevOps, software automation, and bringing all of those together in helping your organization win. I want to see you win. The skills that I've listed in this video, if you do your own research, you will see what I'm talking about. And that's what I put this video together for is to help you think. Don't chase the certification. Chase the skills and that will lead you to your dreams, your goals. Opportunities will be endless for you. Do your own research. Find what your passion, find what makes you happy or just find whatever makes the most money. Whatever your goal is, I want you to really go after it, put in the work and accomplish whatever you desire to. I'm here to help you. My name is Dewan. If you enjoyed this video, hit it with a like, share it out to somebody else if you think it'll help them. And in the comment section below, if you agree or disagree, or you have your own thoughts, I would love to hear them. Share them so that way we all can have a conversation about the skills so we can help each other grow and advance our careers. I thank you for watching this video and I will catch you on the next one. Peace. Man, I think that was pretty good. What'd you think?